Do you worry about a tariff or trade war lasting for the next 20 years and this kind of pull, oh, we're going to get an agreement and oh, maybe no, we're not this week? Yeah, that is, of course, a, a major worry. It's a worry because initially it seemed to be more like a negotiating tactic to see whether we could, you know, rebalance the trade between the U.S. and China. But it, it in, it's got a bad tone, which has really crept into the conversations and made it seem like something more structural uh, yeah. with bipartisan support in the U.S. And, and a serious worry in, in China that it's, it's more about containment and Cold War rather than just trade. Um, Rajiv, one of my favorite, actually, MLive questions now, I'm sure you're familiar with MLive, it's our market blog on the Bloomberg Terminal. And today, this is what they're asking, what's the best way, the best asset to measure U.S.-China trade deal sentiment? Well, well the, one of the most reactive ones has really been the currency. So uh, CNY has moved very much with trade comments. And uh, we saw that on Friday as well, and we've seen that over the past couple of weeks. So I'd say that would be one of the most liquid ways of measuring sentiment. I mean, where do you see renminbi going? And actually, how much does it have to do with, with global trade, and how much does it have to do with active Chinese policy? Yes. And renminbi, I mean, for the time being, is sensitive to this trade negotiations. The, 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 but there's, of course, a stronger dollar in general, which impacts the, the currency pair. So as the dollar strengthens, of course, the, the renminbi is going to weaken. So that's, that's one factor. I, we do see it break the seven level mm -hmm. uh, and probably go somewhat higher. Uh, China is cutting rates. It's stimulating its economy. It's, uh, it's, it's you know, planning to adjust for a, a period of prolonged, let's say, hardship based yeah. on this trade, slower growth. So it needs the currency to adjust downwards as well. Rajiv, it's, it's Monday, so I'm going to do multiple choice questions. What is your biggest concern or what is the biggest concern for this, this region? Is it U.S. policies on trade? Is it a China slowdown, which of course there's an overlap, but it could be a very just domestic concern? Is it Fed normalization or is it something else? I would say the China slowdown reflects the first two. So I would, I would go for the China slowdown. But I mean, the other two are very important as well. How worried are you about a China slowdown? And, and what does that mean for how you, for example, put your portfolios together? Well, I, well, I am worried because if, uh, if China really slows down, it does impact the exports of a lot of the Asian countries towards China, which either go to China as an end destination or are then reshipped on to the rest of the world. So there, that's, that's, a, that's a concern. And so the reshipment, of course, is impacted a lot by what happens on the trade front. Uh, so that, that, is, that, is, that is a worry. We're seeing sentiment decline. Uh, Chinese GDP data is difficult to interpret, mm -hmm. but all the other measures are, are showing signs of weakness. So what we need is we need to see um, some policy action uh, from the Chinese government where we're seeing that turn around some of that sentiment, and we have yet to see something which is really convincing.